And for us in Dubai, it's called Dubai Inc. for a reason. We are run as a business. We want to attract people to come here and be successful. Their success is our success. And this is what our leadership always teaches us. Always ask about how can we make you successful as a business, not how we can be successful as Dubai. You've been a resident and a significant contributor to Dubai's growing blockchain scene for quite a while. Can you share some of the achievements that you're most proud of? Uh, a lot of achievements, to be honest. I, I think uh, one of the biggest things is Dubai is now the epicenter of crypto. And this is our ultimate goal. You know, We want to create this ecosystem here, whether it is builders, uh, talent, access to finance, uh, the community itself, uh, the community of developers, the community of funders, the community of founders, VCs, angel investors, and we are already there, as you can see here in Token 2049 today, despite all the different you know, challenges that were here in the region, we are doing amazingly well. Absolutely. That brings me to my next question, actually. So we're here during the week of Token 2049, but there's also many other events that are happening. People from all over the world are here. So I'm curious um, how you see these events in relation to Dubai's place in the global blockchain scene. I think Dubai is becoming, uh, uh, every day that passes by, a leader in this space, not only from the infrastructure point of view, but also uh, deployable capital out of here, deployable projects and, and foundations out of here, as well as events and activities, whether they are hackathons, side events, like you said, in Token 2049, we have more than 300 side events that are the official ones. We have much more than that that are unofficial and private events as well and gatherings. So imagine how, how much of a scale we have here. Uh, and, and that crypto is here, and crypto here is to stay. And today also we have the announcement of Binance being licensed here. So that is amazing news and very positive for the region. Could you briefly talk to me about Dubai Blockchain Center, how the idea came about, how the process of setting that up was for you? So we started the Blockchain Center in 2018 in May, one day before Ramadan that year. But the work that led up to it started actually in 2012. So we were doing classes, we were doing educational courses, we did a lot of uh, workshops with the government, including central banks, including the regulators, including, the, uh, for example, higher legislative committee, including the police, including any law enforcement entity, including public prosecution, that wanted to learn how to regulate crypto, and more specifically at that time it was Bitcoin. And a lot of like stigma, bad stigma was around Bitcoin and how it's used for illicit activities. But we realized very early on, as early as 2012, that this is the future and it's going to be part of the financial system. So we took a gamble on that and it paid off in a big way. Thank you. And speaking of the future, Dubai has a very ambitious D33 economic agenda. And part of that is to become the world's first blockchain powered government. I'm curious what you think of that. So uh, Dubai economic agenda is a, a very wide and very ambitious and very long kind of uh, uh, plan. It's a 10 year plan, it's 2033. And it encompasses a lot of things, including and not limited to FinTech. So what we want to do is make sure that this actually, given the right priority, make sure that it's not a short term plan, but it's a long term plan. There are a lot of short, uh, and there's a hundred different initiatives actually under this D33 uh, uh, ambitious plan, but we, tr we aim to do it even faster. We, do, we aim to do it with the right partners. We aim to do it with the right outcomes and also platforms that will launch this. One of the initiatives of the D33 is actually called the Sandbox Dubai. There's a lot of other initiatives around the industry and uh, sustainable manufacturing. So it's not only limited to crypto, but crypto is a vital role within that for the access of finance and a lot of other uh, you know, verticals as well. You mentioned outcomes, and I'm very curious about outcomes for both the locals and the expat community and people that might want to come here in the future and businesses. Do you think the D33 economic agenda and specifically the ambition of becoming the world's first blockchain-powered government is going to have equally positive outcomes for all of these groups that I mentioned, or 100%. will some groups be you know, benefiting more from it? So I'll give you a couple of initiatives. So one of the initiatives is uh, building universities that are catered to this emerging tech. So we're not trying to go to the niche you know, uh, projects or uh, certain high-level high universities. We're targeting degrees that will make a difference, that will create the job spaces that we need here. Whether it is emerging tech like uh, blockchain, new ideas like DeepN or AI or, or any kind of new idea that will be taught very quickly and by the right people that actually understand the tech, understand the economic impact, understand the value from these kind of technologies. So very quick go to market is our priority, but also 
creating the job uh, requirement for that area, which means what do employers want to hire? Who do they want to hire? Is there more uh, business development? Is it technical people? Is it developers? Is it acquiring more talent from outside? doesn't have to be education here. It can be even attracting talent to come and be based out of here. So it's a, it's a, a combination of both attracting talent and also creating and upskilling the talent that's already here. Okay, and, and specific to the education side of it, you mentioned you're building universities here and, and that's, that's great to hear. I'm curious, is that because there was at all at any point a negative perception of Bitcoin or blockchain technology or cryptocurrencies and education is an important step to get over that? No, I think I think it's a, it comes in phases, right? The first case of any kind of new technology is the right education. For example, when we started the blockchain uh, uh, strategy for Dubai, it was 2016. And the first step was educating the government department, what is the value take? So we have a, a, a paper by Dubai Blockchain Center and Digital Dubai and another entity called EduChain just to make sure that the government understand the value take of blockchain technology, not just use it as a buzzword understand the pre-project, what needs to be done, what are the challenges. Uh, during the project, what are the things that make it accelerating, how do you get the new stakeholders in, and then post-implementation, how do you scale it, which parts and how the, uh, the, the, the actual project is going to be sustainable uh, through partnerships, to making sure that they're, they're using open standards, making sure it's very easy for people to come on board and leave as well, so there's no reliance on one entity or stakeholder. And I'd like to switch very briefly to the regulatory landscape here. A lot of people around the world talk about, you know, the UAE as an emerging blockchain hub, uh, and they talk about the monetary authority of Singapore as being a sort of an example. Um, how do you see Dubai as, as, you know, moving in the right direction of having clear regulation? I think the, the starting point for us is in the right way, which is VARA, which is the Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority, which is a made-for-purpose cryptocurrency regulator, right? It's a virtual asset made for purpose. Think about that. There's no other place in the world that's trying to do this. We are doing it from a fresh perspective, a blank sheet of paper. You know, this is the best approach. Doing regulation that is catered for the actual thing that's being regulated. So we do not regulate the actual underlying assets, but we regulate activities. So if you are an exchange, we regulate you as an exchange. If you're a broker, a dealer, a VASP, any kind of VASP, we have categories for each one. And for each one of these, we have the controls that you need to abide by. You have to have technical controls, you have to have legal controls, you have to have protections for the customer money and things like that. So if all of these kind of things are met, we issue a license. And do you feel that this regulatory clarity that the country's moving towards is going to attract more business, more exchanges in the future? 100%. And you see the biggest exchanges are getting licenses right now in the region, specifically, more specifically here in Dubai with VARA. We have a lot of licenses for real world assets actually being done in DIFC as well. So you're spoiled for choice in the UAE actually. You have so many ways to get regulated and so many jurisdictions and so many criteria and also regulators to choose from. So uh, it's an amazing place to be in an amazing time. Do you think in the near future then Dubai and, and the UAE more generally can be even more attractive as a financial hub than places like Singapore, London, and New York perhaps? 100%, but we don't look at it as a zero-sum game. We look at it as collaboration. So we're in talks with a lot of Asian regions as well as Europe, as well as other regions in the world, where how we can work together because crypto does not have any border. Virtual assets is, is, is borderless, right? Even the internet, a lot of these digital technologies and digital native uh, uh, um, and inventions and uh, uh, things are really, really no border, right? So it makes no sense to be an island. It makes sense to be more uh, integrated with others, in line with others, and also have passporting rules that can be transferable between a, a business. Makes it easier for people to do business. And for us in Dubai, it's called Dubai Inc. for a reason. We are run as a business. We want to attract people to come here and be successful. Their success is our success. And this is what our leadership always teaches us. Always ask about how can we make you successful as a business, not how we can be successful as Dubai. That's very nice to hear. And very briefly, just thinking about the near future, what are some of the milestones in terms of regulation, perhaps, that uh, the country is looking forward to? I think, first and foremost, is getting the right industry leaders here and the thought leaders here. Second is homegrown talent and homegrown projects. And this is what announced, actually, in the Paris Blockchain Week by the head of VARA, uh, Matthew White. Yep. He was saying that now we are focusing on building the ecosystem here in the UAE, focusing on licensing the, the native and, and organic kind of projects that are out of the region. 
empowering every entrepreneur here in the UAE to have a pathway to getting licensed here. So that's an amazing statement and I, and I back it up fully. Uh, some sector-specific blockchain initiatives. Uh, I came across um, the, uh, the plan to implement blockchain technology in critical healthcare provision. Yep. I wanted to ask you if you have any information on that. So, so there's, there's a lot of uh, technologies like zero knowledge proof, for example. We've done a lot of projects at the UAE very early on. Like we have one of the projects called uh, Donor, which is now called uh, Hayat, which is, means life. Mm -hmm. So uh, for organ donation, it's actually led by the Ministry of, of Health in the UAE. So it's like a DNA matching using HLA DNA, uh, and it's using blockchain for uh, uh, the um, zero knowledge proof aspect of blockchain. For so the donor does not know who he donates to, and the other way around, and also uh, preserve the privacy of the patient data on both sides. So uh, all of that without taking any uh, away from try, trying to find the, uh, the right match. Uh, but this is not the only use case. There is a, the challenge is privacy, and but zero knowledge proof actually solves that. Uh, so the 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 it's a green field right now. There's a lot of room for innovation in, in this area, and I think it's one of those focus areas that we're actually focusing in Dubai on, which is Health 2.0. We call it, which is uh, longevity. We've had a, uh, a conference uh, a couple of days ago called Vita DAO. Uh, focused on lifespan, longevity, and Brian Johnson was actually talking okay, in that yeah. event as well. And he's talking here and he talking talk as well. Yes, yes. 100%. Another, another sector-specific question. Um, I came across visas and also the automotive industry uh, as two examples of, of uh, you know systems that we hosted on a blockchain soon. Do you have some more information on that? And what other use cases can we look forward to seeing on so blockchain? So education, I think, is one of those big things. Uh, I think uh, proof of certification, proof of attendance, POX, this is where I see a lot more than proof of work, for example. All these kind of uh, ways to prove that you attended something, participated in something, went to work, worked on certain things, on-chain, doing these on-chain, it brings a, a degree of comfort that you've done something or you've achieved something. It can be used for gamification on Web3. Uh, those are the use cases where we see the real value of blockchain here because it's a single source of truth. It's a attestation that nobody can actually you know, dispute and it's untampered. Uh, you cannot change it post uh, the event itself. So it just makes sense. Absolutely. I want to ask you, uh, before we let you go, if you have any final remarks about the, the current, the past, the present of Dubai and, and what we can look forward to within Dubai's growing blockchain ecosystem. I think just come to Dubai, we will take care of you. We, your success is our success. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it.